Hey guys, how are you? Welcome into the Sunday morning edition of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. We are here each and every morning on bettingpros.com, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And we're always being brought to you by BetMGM. Okay, I feel like I need to take like a deep breath after yesterday. So we were on an 8-0-2 run going into Saturday. And I, I told you on the podcast yesterday I wasn't interested in the final score, the final mark. I was interested interested in how much money we were going to be up, hopefully, at the end of the day. We had a couple of long shots. And when you do that, it can be feast or famine. But because we had on, you know, we were up three or four units, 3.6, whatever it was, going into Saturday, I felt like, okay, I had the ability to gamble. I don't always gamble, but I was gambling yesterday. And I was trying to see what was going to happen. And, well, it wasn't a great day by any means, okay? We, we ended up down, and I'll have to do all the full calculations, but I think we're down a full unit. I'm not positive about that, but I think that's where we are. So just to do some quick accounting. So if it wasn't for Canelo's knockout in round eight, it would have been a really bad day. <laughs> but I mentioned I just needed one or two of those big guys to cash, and unfortunately, Amanda Hebus' fight got scratched because she tested positive for COVID. She already had COVID. Not really sure what happened with that fight, but it got scratched against Angela Hill, so that fight was off. Donald Cerrone's loss was brutal, and that just killed me, and I can't believe Alex Morono just took him apart. I mean, Cowboy needs to retire. He's had an incredible career, but it's time to hang it up. The, The game has passed him by. He looked very sluggish, very slow, didn't have much of an answer to a younger man, a younger fighter. And then we ended up losing on the Michelle Watterson. Again, it was a value play at plus 175. I, I warned you about that, and she lost you know, four rounds to one in that fight. So we got that wrong. Hockey goes 0-2. Ugh, like the hockey was just... And we're passing on hockey, I think, for the rest of the regular season. I, it's going to get kind of wonky here. They might, there might be a play or two, but I think I'm going to wait with hockey until we get to the postseason, and we're just going to ride out the future bets we've got. We're 1-1 one one on our future bets. Canadians, wrong, but plus 225 on the Carolina Hurricanes to win the Central. Beautiful. And we got one bet left, and that is the Vegas Golden Knights at plus 160 to win the West, and they basically control their own destiny. Another win tonight, or last night, against the St. Louis Blues. So Vegas continues to play well and continues to take care of business. The game on Monday, I'll probably have a play on that. That's against the Colorado Avalanche. It's pretty much, you know, for the division, and I'll probably be on Vegas coming up on Monday for that hockey game. But that might be the last bet for the regular season for for me until we get to the postseason. But hopefully that plus 160 will cash, and that will be great. So a plus 225 and a plus 160 to come in on our future bets in hockey, 2-1. and I'll take that every single time. When it comes to plus money like that. So we'll be up a, a unit or two or uh, yeah, right. We'll be up. Uh, yeah. A unit plus because plus 160 and plus 225, but then down a half a unit for the ca- missing on the Canadians. But a uh, pretty good mark there for our future bets in the NHL. So just kind of how where we are with, with, you know, unfortunately a bad day in hockey. Oh, and two bad day in the UFC. Oh, and two, two and one, one and oh on Major League Baseball player props two uh, one and one in NBA player props. So we wound up two and one in the prop market. So that was a success, you know, profitable in in, in that area. Uh, And then Canelo by decision, half a unit wrong, but Canelo getting a knockout in round eight plus 440 cashed. Also, the fight did not go to the over 10 and a half rounds at 0.25 units. So down 0.75 units, but then we come back with a win where we wind up, you know, clearing, you know, 1.4 units or whatever it was for that one, you know, very impressive knockout, breaking the orbital bone of Billy Joe Saunders. And as I said, if he was going to knock him out, those were the rounds that Billy Joe Saunders was going to have to survive. It was a wild fight, man. I mean, as being a guy who loves boxing, who was in a boxing gym, you know, that morning, yesterday morning, Billy Joe Saunders had a very interesting style, and he kept on dropping his hands and dropping his head. And it took Canelo a little bit to figure out that if I just throw uppercuts, this dude's going to be in trouble. And he walked into a right that broke his face, literally broke his orbital bone. Things swelled up immediately. 
when he was on the stool, I, I said to my friend who were watching the fight here at my house, and I said, that fight's over. He's like, what do you mean? That fight's over. He, he can't see out of his eye. I mean, his eye is busted, and all that thing's going to do is swell shut. And I don't care how good the cut man is, Billy Joe Saunders is not continuing on this fight. And the cornerman called it because they knew. I mean, he didn't quit on the stool like they were saying on the broadcast. He could not see that eye was going to swell shut, and they took him right to the hospital for that very reason because they knew that that eye was, was, was swollen shut. So, not great. So all in all, we wound up down on Saturday, losing night, but not horrible. A winning week, a big winning week for us. One of our better weeks we've had here over the last, in 2021. So uh, let's keep the, the ball going. Let's keep it in, in the right direction here. A little bit of a lighter Sunday as we start the week here. And, you know, as I said, we're going to be a little bit careful with the NBA, a little bit careful with the NHL. I've got two baseball plays for you coming up. I'm going to stick with the division that I know the best in the American League East. And then we're going to get to one NBA play uh, to give you guys here. So three plays going for us here today for the Daily Juice podcast. Okay, so let's start with Major League Baseball. And let's talk about the Boston Red Sox here taking on the Baltimore Orioles. The Red Sox have really owned the Orioles so far this season. The Red Sox have a 5-3 and three record. But the last four games, they opened up the year getting swept by the Orioles. Since then... It's been 7-3, 6-4, 14-9, 6-2, to and 11-6 to for the Red Sox. A part of me wants to come in here and say that the Red Sox are going to win this game because Nick Pavetta has been pretty good. He's 4-0 with a 3.23 ERA. He's got a 1-3 whip. He's given up 21 hits in 30 and two-thirds innings. He's facing off against Dean Kremer, who is 0-2 with a 6.43 ERA, whip of 1.6. This game, though... And just because I've watched enough Red Sox baseball in my life, this game feels like a bullpen, uh, a bullpen blow, blowing game for the Red Sox. Like Pavetta goes six innings, gives up two runs, leaves with like a three-two lead, and then the bullpen blows it. Uh, like the Red Sox have been playing so well lately, and they've won three of four. They're beating up on bad teams. They took two or three from the Detroit Tigers. They're taking taking two or three or two in a row from the Baltimore Orioles, both on the run line, six to two and eleven to six. It just kind of feels like Boston gets off to a good start here. They have a lead, and then Baltimore come from behind. I know that's not the greatest of handicapping. It's just kind of like a, a gut feel here. Red Sox to have the lead after five on the money line. First five money line is minus one ten. For the Red Sox here, not horrible to stay away from the bullpen and just get Nick Pavetta to pitch another good game here. And maybe he leaves again with like a 3-2 lead, but then he winds up giving it over to the bullpen who blows it. I'm going Red Sox first five minus 110 on the money line. And I'm going to ride Nick Pavetta here a little bit who has pitched very, very well. And hopefully Dean Kremer gets hit pretty hard here by the Red Sox. Red Sox hit right. He's pretty good. You know, hopefully we see some offense kick in over the last three games. The Red Sox have led after five in these against these three teams against, uh, you know, on 11, 6, 6, 2, 14, 9. They've led after five in all those games. So I'm going to come back here, you know, decent team against a bad team, not dealing with the bullpen. First five Red Sox against the Orioles here today, just on the money line at minus 110. One more baseball play. Yankees and the Nationals. Okay, so these two teams played a game yesterday, and the Yankees got shelled. <laughs> Nationals wind up scoring 11 runs in this game. 11 to 4 is, uh, well, sorry, that th- th- was on Friday. 11 4 on Friday, 4 3 Yankees win yesterday. In these two games, the bullpens have been completely and totally taxed. And I think when you look at how they're going to approach a Sunday, the Yankees are starting to swing the bat, okay? And the Nationals are okay here. As I mentioned, you know, they scored 11 runs on Friday, three runs yesterday. But for the Yankees, seven runs on Saturday, 15 runs on Friday, 11 runs on Thursday, 9, 10 of the last five games. We're looking at the over nine runs coming in on all of these games so far 
Yankees are facing a starting pitcher here in Joe Ross who, who gives up home runs. And Domingo Herman also is a guy who does get hit. I mean, both these guys have a 2-2 two and two record with a 4.39 ERA. And I don't really think either bullpen is in great shape going into this game on Sunday. I got it juiced to minus 120, but I'm going to play the over for the Nationals and the Yankees here with the Yankees at home and having a chance to put up a bunch of runs. You know, I think we're going to see somewhere in the round. I think the Yankees wind up winning this game. But I think it's like, you know, a 7-4 to four type of win for New York here against the Nationals. Or it could be a 7-4 win for the Nationals. I, I think, you know, both teams are starting to swing the bat fairly well. Uh, for the Nationals, it is interesting because the only big game, uh, if you add up, you know, if nine were, were the total for the Nationals, only once in the last five games has the over come in. It was against the Yankees on Friday night. But I think that they're good for four to five runs, okay? Yankees are good for six to seven runs, I think. And we're going to play the over nine at minus 120 for the Yankees and the Nationals. Okay, so two plays in Major League Baseball. Red Sox first five minus 110 on the money line. And the Yankees, Nationals over nine runs at minus 120. Both these games are being played early in the morning. It's a 1 o'clock start time on or, or 10 o'clock start time on the West Coast, 1 o'clock start time on the East Coast. And I'm playing golf in the morning, and so I hope to come off, you know, after I need to go back to the course because, my gosh, <laughs> my father-in-law are going to play. He leaves on Thursday, so we're going to play golf one more time uh, before he leaves. And, yes, it's on Mother's Day, and remind you, hey, it's Mother's Day, guys. Call your mom. Heads up. It's Mother's Day. Call your mother. Uh, I didn't have any quirky, fun type of bets to make for Mother's Day. I looked into it, but I, I, I couldn't find anything that really made any sense to do for Mother's Day. But just, it's Mother's Day, so call your mom. And, uh, you know, the moms in your life, thank them all. Your wife, girlfriend, whatever, you know, thank them. And make sure you call your own mom. But the I'm playing in the morning, and then we're going to dinner in the afternoon. So... I, I kind of want to get my I, – I like the fact that my bets may be kind of wrapping here relatively quick, uh, for baseball at least, in the mornings before we wind up going to dinner. So two bets, Red Sox first five, money line minus 110, Yankees Nationals over nine runs at minus 120, each for a half a unit. One play in the NBA. I'm passing on hockey today, just two games on the slate. I'm passing on hockey entirely today. But I uh, got one play for you in the NBA, and then we will have the player props. At some point during the day, I will give you player props for uh, for today. Half a unit each, sorry, quarter unit each for those player props for the NBA. But let's talk about the Knicks and the Clippers. Okay, this is an interesting matchup. If you look at the Knicks and the Clippers and how these teams have played, the Knicks are 31-36 and 36 to the over. Clippers are 33-32-2 and two to the over. The, the, the Knicks, however, are 7-3 and three to the over over your last 10 Three and two to the over over the last five. Clippers are on the exact opposite. One eight and one to the over in their last ten. Oh four and one over the last five. They pushed on their last game. The Knicks, though, when they played at home against these LA Clippers, they got destroyed. They gave up 129 points. The total was two ten and a half, and it went over by 33 and a half points. Went way over. Clippers just annihilated. I As long as everybody plays in this game, and I think everyone is going to play in this game, the total is 216. That's not outrageous. If you look at the totals for the Knicks over the last, uh, what is this, the last eight games, they're 6-2 and two to the over over the last eight games. The totals have been 219, 213, 215, 210 and a half, 218 and a half, 221 and a half, 214 and a half, and 217 and a half. These are all numbers, I mean, 216. We're right in the middle of it here, right? So it's right consistent. On the other side, the, 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 the Clippers are on a wacko streak here. The over has hit only once, going back to the 14th of April. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy. The push that they had against the Lakers snapped a six-game streak in a row where the under had come in for the Clippers. I, I think this is a get-right spot for that offense, for the Clippers, as they start to kind of round, round, uh, round into form. And I think the Knicks are going to be able to score. Knicks have been playing really well, scoring a lot of points. I think the Knicks are going to put, put, you know, put points on the board here. And I think the over comes in over 216. 
We're playing the over 216 for Knicks and the Clippers here. Knicks have been very good in the first half. I may have a personal play on that to come in. I added a personal play last night where I jumped on the Golden State Warriors again at minus 14 and a half. And that hit, which was beautiful, Steph, I, I go, Steph's going to go for 40 plus. He went for 49. I should have bet the Steph player prop. I didn't. It was 36 and a half, but I did bet the, them to win. And for our future bet there, we're okay, all right? Four games left for the Golden State Warriors. They got to win two of the four to cash our bet of 37 wins. Crossing our fingers. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tough. It may come down to the last game of the regular season for the Clippers. Sorry, for the, for the Warriors. But we're right there for the Warriors with our one NBA future bet that we made. The Warriors to win more than 36 games. It is tight, tight, tight. But they put themselves in a good spot. Two wins of the last four games, and they get there. So we hit that last night. So all in all, it wasn't an awful day for me. Pretty much flat, even though it was a down day uh, for both me personally and on the podcast. But we bounced back late in the day, which wasn't bad. So not horrible. And so I will probably have a personal play in the Knicks in the first half in this one. It's seven and a half for a number. First half's probably going to be three and a half or four. So I probably will be on the Knicks in the first half in this game, plus three and a half or four, just, just given how good the Knicks have been in the first half. Uh, and, and this is a big game for both these teams. I mean, it's, it's a, probably a bigger game for the Knicks than, than the Clippers. But the standings, it's so it's so interesting to watch and see what's going to unpl- uh, unfold here because the Celtics play today. They play the Heat, which is a huge game, and I can't go near it because – Boston is so inconsistent, but that's the biggest game of the day in the NBA. Miami and Boston uh, Heat are up by one game. Boston right now is currently in the play-in tournament, so they tr- they're desperately trying to get out of that. The Knicks are trying to stay ahead of the Hawks and the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. They're just two games up on Boston, ha- half a game up on Atlanta, and a full game up on the Miami Heat. That's a huge game for them. But for the Clippers, you know, they're trying to improve their seeding if they can. Keep Denver at bay. Denver's a game and a half back from them from the four seed. Do they want to play Utah or do they want to play Phoenix? I don't know. <laughs> Both those games could be tough for them. But I think they'd rather play, uh, you know, I, think, I don't know who they'd rather play, to be honest. I think maybe they'd rather play Phoenix because of their inexperience in the postseason. But I don't know. That's... That's kind of an interesting debate as to what they may have, but it's still a big game for them trying to stay at the three seed where they are, uh, which they play the Phoenix Suns at the moment if we started the NBA playoffs. So just a lot of really cool moving pieces, but a big game for the Knicks. They need to play well, come out there 37 and 30 on the year and come out and play well here on the road. So our plays on the day, as I mentioned, Red Sox, first five, money line, uh, Red Sox to be win- to be li- winning on the money line, minus 110. Yankees Nationals over nine runs at minus 120. Knicks Clippers over 216 at minus 110. All those bets half a unit, and we will have two player props going for the other half of unit because we don't leave a half a unit behind, as you can see on YouTube with the T-shirt that I am wearing that you can buy, by the way, if you'd like to buy that at fancypros.com slash shop for these types of fun little T-shirts that we've got for the Daily Juice podcast. My name is Matt Peralta. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Thank you for everything you do for us. We are extremely thankful for you, your time, and everything you've done for us. We're back on a Monday for pushing... No, it's my radio show. Back on a Monday for the Daily Juice podcast brought to you by BetMGM here on bettingpros.com.